Hey guys, I'm Truffman from Worklocking TV and we're here at the HWBot World Tour 2015 Asia, the ROG OC show on time. I'm here with uh, Sean from Hyperx. Hey! Hi, good to be here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming. Uh, you are we are here in the more a uh, little bit more relaxed, uh, yes. relaxed way. Uh, the next 15 minutes gonna be more like a discussions uh, from an overclocker or someone reporting about overclocking to someone working for one of the partner of this event, HyperX. Um, but first of all, what is your responsibility or role inside HyperX uh, so far? So I'm the technology manager at HyperX. So I mainly look after technical marketing and just support for sometimes event like this and other marketing events that we're involved with. So I guess there's some uh, gaming too in the involved in that? Yes, yeah. M mostly? <laughs> Almost daily, yeah. We, we play some games, yes. <laughs> so we, we saw HyperX as a, as a huge brand, you know, uh, people uh, add sometimes to, 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 to make the difference between Kingston and uh, HyperX. Um, what do you have to say to people that still uh, don't get the difference in between? Is that complete separate brands or same company? How does that work? Uh, same company uh, coming up soon where those you'll see a bit more separation uh, but still very much the back end is a lot of kinks and engineering mm -hmm. uh, but the front end will be more just HyperX branded for marketing purposes but even as we see like all the like the logos and it's just HyperX so just so we have yeah. to think about I at, uh, we, have, we have to think about HyperX as that's an own brand yes it is, it's its own brand yeah externally it'll be seen just as HyperX yeah yeah. Good, and then actually you actually extend the you widen a bit the the number of product that you guys have. I mean, you, you used to do memories and SSD, and now you're doing headsets. Headsets, yeah, headsets. Uh, we have also mouse pads now, uh, and yeah, very successful, particularly on the headset. Yeah. So you're actually ex extending Iprex more like as a as a gaming brand in the in the wider sense of uh, of the meaning. Definitely, that's the plan. Yeah. So we're getting a bit out of the box so to speak, so we're not just doing, you know, memory or SSD or USB, we're doing, you know, headsets and mouse pads and potentially other products. <laughs> I see, so that may be some stuff coming. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, for us, over here, what uh, interests us the most is actually the uh, memory and the SSD. I show you, I do, uh, I do get some, uh, some here. Um, I remember that the, there was some with the, with the huge X on the SSD design and so on. Uh, are you gonna change some of the design even more? You're gonna stick to the like the Hyperx uh, clean and soft, uh, soft one. I think yeah, the the logo is gonna stay the same for now. Yeah, uh, the the new Savage is a bit more prominent with the Hyperx branding, um, and it's kind of tough with the new M.2s. There's only really so much space, <laughs> so uh, it's just a sticker yeah, to, to, exactly. to put the logos on it. So. Right, yeah. So it's a little tough there, but uh, yeah, it's gonna stay kind of clean. Yeah. I see. And um, so far, here we are at the HWBot World Tour. Hyperx is one of the partners of the event, along with uh, Asus and Seasonic. Um, you, do, you do a lot of gaming. You also have a gaming team. Uh, so far, here it's only about overclocking. Uh, why Hyperx was interested in sponsoring this kind of event? So uh, definitely we are involved a lot with overclocking, and it definitely uh, is very important for us because that's kind of where the hardware is going. So it's good for us to get feedback from the people that are on you know, the cutting edge of, and people that are enthusiasts about performance hardware because that's where part of our brand fits in is at the performance area. So that's a good way for, for you to actually uh, show off the, the performances of, uh, of the gears that you're selling right. to a broader bro bro market. Yeah, so we, we uh, yeah, our engineering team likes to get the feedback from the overclockers because they're pushing the limits of what the hardware can do. And then we can take that feedback and implement it into some of the products we release also. What would be, as you, you know, you, you say you do gaming even almost daily, like what would be the, the biggest difference between like gaming world and the overclocking world? Uh, there's a bit of crossover, but uh, lately, yeah, there's a lot of people that are into gaming that aren't necessarily into technology. So that is, for me, has been a bit of a learning experience that there's some gamers that don't know too much about hardware. Whereas a lot of the enthusiasts, which is more my background, um, who are also gamers, definitely know hardware pretty well. So that's the main difference. Yeah, that's a bit of like the the new turn. Like most of the even some gamers just buy like 
already made PC, but in the past we used to build our own, especially for for that or for that purpose. So of course, that the, this this knowledge is a little bit, a little, little bit lost in a, in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. Recently, because PCs are becoming so mainstream and it's easy to buy a powerful PC off the shelf that you can play games with, and it's just gaming is becoming more mainstream. Whereas before, it was people that were into computers. And and also. even nowadays, you can buy like your pre-overclocked PC too. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> like all the market are sh like shifting the same way. Yeah, um, we do actually use some of the new DDR4 from. Uh, from Hyperx uh, here this weekend. Um, there's actually one to win on the giveaway on our Facebook fan page. So if you go to facebook.com forward slash overclocking TV, you can enter in the, the giveaway along with some of the other gear. Uh, don't forget, you can just uh, participate and every time you share it, you're just gonna gain one more chance to, to win one of these uh, nicely prized from the partner of uh, this, uh, this event, the Azure Blue World Tour. Uh, this video is not live. Uh, we did record it a bit before, but don't don't hesitate to ask us any questions on the live chat. We're gonna answer them uh, by text or even after when we're gonna come back live uh, with the guests, uh, myself Tuchman and uh, Ligov from Belgium. Um, coming back to uh, our guest here, and um, I have a little bit more of uh, uh, a question regarding your background. You said you're coming from this in, in like the technical background before. Um, were you an overclocker before? <laughs> uh, not necessarily. I was uh, into performance and tuning and building for performance, not necessarily overclocking. But yeah, when I started at Kingston, I started definitely to get more into overclocking and the HyperX side. And I spent a lot of time doing that, not necessarily with liquid nitrogen, but we have a couple in-house guys that I get to talk to about uh, their overclocking on liquid nitrogen. So. Um, I understand a bit about it, uh, but mainly all my overclocking is on the air. Yeah, well, it's all fine. You know, like the, all the uh, like the top overclockers that we see here today, and we're gonna see all weekend long. It's it's one person of the community. Like right. everyone else is like underwater cooling or air cooling. There's not not that many people using uh, single stage like uh, refrigeration systems. Um, but most of the people that do overclocking, they are not using a liquid nitrogen. That's just only for the top, uh, the top guys. Everyone can do it with some training and uh, and, and going on uh, with the good hardware, like HyperX hardware maybe. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the online communities are. I mean, it's very easy to pick up for the beginner. There's a lot of good information out there on the forums and other websites that basically tell you how to go from not knowing anything to being a total expert. So. Yeah, it's actually, it's it's very easy nowadays to even overclock. Uh, yeah. I remember, like, it's been 14 years I'm doing that. I'm still quite on, but it's been 14 years. I spent half of my life <laughs> doing this or reporting for that. And uh, like 10 years ago, you had to modify the motherboard. We don't have to do that anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, and even memory is super easy now. Uh, we have some parts that are plug and play overclocked, so you don't have to do anything in the BIOS. Uh, that's our HyperX Fury line, uh, and then we have the XMP from Intel XMP profiles, the, the which addition. is yeah, great addition. Uh, just lets you do one click in the BIOS, and you're automatically overclocked. It's very easy. Yeah. Well, the, the, these things evolve. Uh, some people say it evolves in a way that it's too easy for everyone to do it. Mm -hmm. I do think it's uh, evolving in a good way. For it's easy for everyone to jump in. It's more like uh, easier to, for everyone to, to get together in. Um, actually, uh, the, the world tour is the third stop. We did one in uh, Canada, one in uh, Europe, and one here. And every, every time, except for this one, we did teach amateurs. And amateurs were sometimes surprising on the way they were doing things because they don't have the same limitation as us. Uh, so far, uh, when we used the product, we, we saw that. Um, there's not much risk to, to burn anything, especially on especially on the side of the SSD and the memory. Uh, you can actually push that a lot without having any damage to it. Yeah, it's pretty safe. I mean, so far I haven't killed any hardware, so uh, it's pretty safe to touch you know most voltages in the BIOS and play around with timings, frequency. It's it's easy and yeah, it's it's pretty safe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually, the, I was actually surprised on how some like newcomers, we told them, nah, you should not go over that and trying the system still works. <laughs> I'm not saying that you should do that, huh? <laughs> but I'm just saying that this, uh, this uh, still happened. 
Um, we are here in Taiwan. Uh, that was Computex. Uh, did HyperX announce some new things during the show? Yeah, so a couple new things uh, regarding memory. We have, we're going to launch some new speeds that uh, we've been using at uh, the overclock events, particularly our hot tour that we did last mm -hmm. year. Um, we had some special modules that we built for that, and based on the good feedback we got, we're going to release those in the coming months. Uh, we also have uh, 128 gigabyte kits of eight, so 16 gigabyte DIMMs. Nice. So that's going to be coming out in the next month or two uh, for X99. I, I would gladly use that for the stream platform. Yeah. And encoding after that. Yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll be great for encoding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we have that. And then recently we, we did uh, our M.2 SSD, PCIe SSD, which uh, has a very good performance and uh, it's pretty popular right now. Yeah. Well, talking about that product in particular, so that's the M2 SSD that you plugged on a PCI Express card, so you can just slot in or use the M2 as the direct M2 card, right? Yeah, so we did, for flexibility, we have, yeah, the direct M.2 where you can plug it straight into your board, or if you have an older system without an M.2, then we have the add-in PCIe card, so basically you just plug the M.2 into the PCIe card and you can use it on any system that's, you know, the last four years or so, yeah. That's actually all the good for editing, video editing, when we do that with, uh, exactly. with our producer at yeah. Timote. So like editing 4K and PCI Express SSD, that, yeah. that's what you need then. So you just need to get yeah that 128 gig kit and the M.2 SSD and you're set, yeah. <laughs> that, I want to I wanna test that one day. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, talking about the, the, the SSD still, um, in the past, in the past few years, it was very yeah. difficult to get uh, PCI Express SSDs to install Windows on it. Mm -hmm. There were some issues, some drivers, the NVMe came along to solve that issue. Yeah. Um, was, was that from the technical point of view and uh, something that did enable the market to access uh, easier to, the, to this kind of uh, product? Yeah, that was uh, so. That was a big stopping point for PCIe, and um, but ours, yeah. There's it's all native drivers, so there's nothing special you have to do. You just plug it in and you install Windows. It's it's pretty easy. Yeah, it's like plugging the the hard drive on the SATA right. the SATA exactly, one. Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Um, we have SATA Express, although coming on the, the big way to the, to the new motherboard. Pretty much all the main board we saw, uh, either the X99 or the Z170 that will be used later on this, uh, this year, uh, they all have SATA Express ports. Uh, so you guys are working on something, I guess? Uh, we don't have anything confirmed on the roadmap, but uh, it's something that we're considering so well, you're looking at it right we're not getting, <laughs> gonna get any information <laughs> no, for that <laughs> no, no exclusives right now you're gonna have the legals calling oh yeah. no you should not exactly. have done that yeah. well <laughs> it's not running right now because it's not live yet <laughs> But uh, overall, we see like the, the market is actually um, going in a way where it's like uh, faster and faster and faster. Like the bottleneck are reducing. Actually, the bottleneck are shifting. Yes. Uh, the CPU is not not anymore like a huge bottleneck. Like the VGA card are now like kind of a bottleneck. Yeah. The SSD were good, and then they became bo new bottleneck again. Yeah. So, do you think that trend's gonna slow down or continue? It's just just a personal opinion on that one. Yeah, I mean, I think everything's going to get closer to the CPU. And, um, I mean, things are heading that way. In the last, you know, couple of years, things have progressed so much that, you know, we're at 1,000 megabyte, 1,400 megabyte for an SSD where, you know, a few years ago you were, you know, stuck on a 100 megabyte hard drive. So, you know, it's, it's just going to keep getting going that way. And all the bottlenecks are going to eventually go away, yeah. I see. Talking back uh, the last few minutes about overclocking a, li a little bit more, are you planning some uh, special things coming on? I, of course, on the memory side, uh, DDR4 is around the corner. We know that there's a new platform coming from Intel around the corner. We cannot comment on anything because we don't know anything. <laughs> no, but that's true. I mean, we don't even know the date of the launch because they didn't announce it. They just... Well, we can't even tell what they say, so right. whatever. <laughs> How do you see the future for DDR4 overclocking? 
So yeah, it'll be very interesting later this year. I think there's going to be a lot changing and uh, a lot more people overclocking, particularly with DDR4, because um, it's been a bit limited so far because we've just had X99. So yeah, I think uh, later this year, overclocking will get, for memory, will get a bit more uh, exciting. And we will have some events, or one big event later this year for overclocking. Hmm. Hmm. We'll see that. Um, these kind of events uh, is organized by HW Bots and in partnership with the partners. Um, but you guys had your own event in uh, Las Vegas earlier this week, this year, actually, like the first week of the year in the, in the CES. Yeah. Uh, that was the uh, HOT, the Hyperx Overclocking Tournament. Um, you did one. You did the final for the previous year and so on. Um, where do you see the, the kind of overclocking event going? More like organized by the community or the league like it is right now here at the Azure World 2015 or more like each vendor going to try to keep on doing their own, uh, own events? Uh, I guess I think most vendors will probably do their own events. Uh, for the last couple of years, we did our HOT tour. Uh, last year we did yeah, multiple stops. We had the online qualifiers. Uh, this year we're doing uh, less events but more focused events. Um, so I think, um, and then we'll be supporting a lot of uh, other partner events like this event, um, more so this year than we did previously. Uh. So you see that uh, in the future everything gonna like the, m the industry gonna keep doing some stuff and the community yeah. and the league gonna like, keep yeah. although doing uh, going inside yeah yeah and we definitely like to I mean we have a couple guys in house that are uh, extreme overclockers and so they're very in touch with the community and we try to make our events basically what the overclockers want because without that I mean what's the point right <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hardware <laughs> yeah, that's right yeah <laughs> Well, uh, I think we uh, had a long turn around uh, everything about this kind of events and uh, the technology in general, what's going on for HyperX, uh, what's going on around the overclocking at HyperX and uh, all the different uh, events. So far, we cannot overclock USB keys. <laughs> Not yet, maybe one day. Maybe we one day. cannot overclock quite much the SSD <laughs> yet, but uh, maybe with the PCI Express, we can maybe find some stuff oh, on it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But well, anyway, thank you very much, Sean, yeah. for uh, for your time. Thank I appreciate you this me. kind of uh, this kind of talk. Um, we, you are welcome back uh, anytime, uh, anytime you want. Don't forget, guys. Um, that was the uh, the talk we had with Hyperx. But we're gonna give away some special uh, stuff on the live stream when this video gonna air. Um, so stay tuned, and there's gonna be the information on the live chat. Uh, we won't. I cannot tell right now what we're gonna be doing, but you, you're gonna have the information on the live chat. So. Don't forget, guys, you can keep on uh, watching all the live stream this weekend. And we have a good saying at Overclocking TV. When we always end up a video, we say, don't forget, guys, keep pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Bye. Bye.